We didn't do Dalit. Okay, we're going to start Dalit now. So the Shari asked till now. We are we are holding by Lias Vitzvani Shalak Kaddish Baruch at the end of the brackets, the first paragraph on page one eighty one. And we said move on. I have, I have That's where we end. We started is Dalit or not? No, no, no. We're holding. Uh, we didn't finish the after, previous. Okay. We, we're hold, we're holding uh, after Ha'arath uh, thirty four at the end of that um, three lines later. Okay, so the Shaili is ha, ha, how's they have explained that the Nitzchis of Torah. Why why are mitzvahs Nitzchis? Why are they eternal? They're eternal because they are not simply means by which to achieve an objective. Even did a betachtoinim, so we've elevated the world, we've refined the world, we've conquered the Yitzhahara, um Job done, no longer need for mitzvahs. That's not true, because the pinimius. Although although there is the agenda to the mitzvah, there is to fix the self, to fix the world, and from that perspective, therefore, as Rebbe explains elsewhere. Mitzvahs have different degrees of severity, depending on how much, for sins, both mitzvahs. Some mitzvahs contribute more uh, substantially, overtly speaking, to or the self or reward, bigger reward, therefore. And other mitzvahs contribute less substantially or significantly. We're talking really in like in Kamos. And likewise, Avedis. Some Avedis stain the soul, damage the world to a greater degree. Again, this is this is quantity slash quality, but not not essence. We're talking quantity and quality, but not essence. Now, this we're talking chitzonius and pinimius, but not etzim. Or in other words, we're talking the pratim of the mitzvah, the klal of the mitzvah, but not the etzim. So the pratim and the klal are all very different. And hence, different degrees of reward and punishment. And some of them are so severe that recall, the neshama has got to be withdrawn. We'll, we'll have another another shot at this in, in another Gilgal. But you cross the line that cannot, uh, uh, there can be no good that comes from such a person beyond that. In his current state, without cleaning up his soul and his damage in the world, and that's what the punishments are. But that's all the agenda. Fix, elevate, earn reward, all these levels. But the essence of the mitzvahs are the Ebishtas Rotzen, like he is. And there is no reason. In pure will. I want because I want. Not because of anything external. Not because of any gain. That's the essence of the mitzvahs. And hence they'll be forever. So how do we understand altogether mitzvahs but tailless lost it love? It'd be no mitzvahs. What does this mean? So if Torah is forever, what's this quote, mitzvahs betelis lasid lavoi, which it also contradicts. Halachas she Torah shabal pesha einam betelim. Bedoichik, that could be answered by saying, that we only mean that they're not bottled till their agenda is achieved. But once it's done, it's done its job. But that's, he said, that's a doichik. So we're left now with questions unanswered. We did we do 35 out of 35? No, we didn't. No, we're up to Mizem Muvan. We're in the text. Mizem Muvan. Shein Loimesh and Nitzchis, the Mitzvah Satoy, the Hurak, and Meshach Hazmanda, Yim Lasaisom. In light of the above that we explained, that Mitzvahs of the Torah, as opposed to again the Nevi'im. Did you do any research, Shmuel? I did not check. Not yet. Sorry. As opposed to the Nevi'im, that's all agenda-laden and therefore temporary, ultimately. Because their job is only to bolster and reinforce the observance of Torah. So their mitzvahs, their nevuahs are temporary. Ultimately, they have served their purpose. Whereas the mitzvahs, the Tariyag mitzvahs, are mamish, the Ivarim of the Malka, the al and in Tanya from the Zoya. The 613 mitzvahs are literally the, the, the limbs of the king. Like the king himself, they're eternal. So therefore, we cannot say that they're only relevant for as long as we're engaged in the job of doing mitzvahs to, in other words, pre 
Gula pre Olam Haba, we can't say there's a cut off line. That they're only Kishiyesh Serech Bavidosim Shali Salbabir Olam. We cannot say that they're only temporary and they're only needed and their usefulness and their purpose is only to refine the world of and then once the world is refined, quote, beyond the today, the the tomorrow, when we get the war reward, then they no longer no longer exist. We cannot say that. Given as he puts in italic, Hashem's will is eternal and essential. It does, it's not dependent upon, it doesn't change. In accordance with the changes of the matzav of the person, the world, now the world is perfected. We don't need to fix anymore. This is not about fixing. That's the external dimension. Its essence is pure will. So since it's explicit in the Torah, she mitzvah, that it's a divine commandment, communication, that a med, according to Rambam, a medes lo'ilom 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 that stands forever and for unto eternity, eichitochen, how is it possible that mitzvahs betel is lost in love? That there's no mitzvahs. Haorah 35, what was Haorah 34? Haro 34 is pointing out the limitations of the of the Nevoos, of the Nevi'im. I think we see this. V'atshigam Nevoos, Shehutzachol Deiris, even prophecies that weren't only for that generation, but were said for generations to come. Again, it would be nice to have illustrations of this. Shenichtu Gusifra Nevi'im that we find in the works of the prophets, I see only but the Mosa Mashiach, they will have, again, run their course, fulfilled their purpose, and no longer necessary. As opposed to the trade itself and the mitzvahs. Lahayir footnote Haora 35. Lahari Mavur Behem Shech Ayim Beis. So it's not worthy to point out that which he explains in Ayim Beis of the Rebbe Rashab Sharotzen, the mitzvahs are Rotzen Atzmi. The will of mitzvahs are an essential will. Shein and Mishtan are not subject to change. And there he addresses our question. So he has a question when we're asking. So what does it mean that mitzvahs have been nullified? We just said that they're essential. His answer is, It doesn't mean they will no longer be observed. They'll become nullified only in the sense they will not be significant. The God by Yoda Atzmi, the, the law said, in the face of the essential revelation of godliness, that will be a Mashiach comes. Or, Kamoy, for example, Shrag a a candle in sunlight, my Mahani, what does it contribute? It doesn't contribute any light, but it'll still be there. That's his answer. But the Rebbe says this answer isn't satisfactory. I will be this in a Shaykh Lechayr, the Pashtus Asugyu Benid. But this explanation doesn't answer, it seems, the simple. Understanding of the Gemara which we learned yesterday, correct? In Nida, the Shiddes Hatoisves, Al Dvadin Kvurubikiloy, with respect that you can bury someone in shrouds in Tachrichim of Shatnes of Kiloyim, Afa Pishilosit, Yamid Bel Mabushov, Shinik Vavahem, Kibin Shemitzvah's Patelis, even though when he gets up, so he's wearing. Kiloim, so Tasha says it's okay explaining the Gemara because there's no mitzvah, I know. Not that there'll be a mitzvah and it won't contribute. There's no mitzvah. So he can be in Kiloim. Hainu shit is battle, mitzvah, Kiloim, Kipshutra. It's, it's the, the simple understanding of the Gemara is that you can bury a person in shrouds because by Tchias Amesim, there's no mitzvah and it's not a problem. Later, as he says in Hour 46, the Rebbe is going to, after his beard, revisit the word of the Rebbe Rashab and explain it. But right now, um, we don't understand exactly what he's saying. It doesn't fit. It doesn't accord with the simple meaning of the Gemara. He says, we'll still observe them. They just won't contribute. Which also begs the question, then, why observe them? Why light a candle if it's not going to give light? That's also not answered. But aside from that, he, the Rebbe Rashab is saying we'll still do that. That's not the implication of the, of the Gemara. 
The simple understanding of the Gemara is that you can bury him. Why? Because mitzvahs, betelahs, b'meisim, chavshi, and they're just, there are no mitzvahs. So we're left puzzled. Yeah, questions are clear. Ois dalid. Let's this be understood by examining the language and the details of this sugya in the Gemara Nida, where which is the source of all of this. That mitzvahs are nullified. The Gemara says it's a brisa. A garment in which was lost in the thread of kilaim. So it was a woolen garment, and and he can't identify it. And there's a thread of linen that somehow is now stuck in, woven in, as it were, in, in a, uh, a garment. So what do you do with it? So you cannot, the Baraisa said, you cannot even sell it to a non it may end up in Jewish hands, you can't even make it into a saddle of a donkey, which, no problem with that, but the problem is they're made out of patches and someone could remove that patch and use it as, as his clothing. So because of the remote chance, it'll end up, a Jew wearing it, you, you can't do anything with it. One thing you can do. I mean, you could use it for fuel. You'll not have a no from it. You can't wear it. So, but you can make tachrichin for the dead. Omar Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef says, it's a matter. So we see from this b'raise that mitzvahs betelis lasted lovely. That mitzvahs are nullified. I'm only a bias, we just read about this day, right? We just... I'm only Abai Vitaim of Dimi. Abai is said to Rabbi Yosef and some said of Dimi, counted and said to him, quoting, Vamma Rabbi Mani, Yom Rabbi Yanai. Didn't Rabbi Mani say, Yom Rabbi Yanai, Leishon Elo the Safdai. No, there are mitzvahs in the future because this statement of the Braise that says you can make Tachrichen is only the Safdai, only for the purposes of the eulogy there where people gather by the cave or on the street. And there, the, 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 the dead is lying, so you can lie tachrichim. That's okay. Because right now there's no mitzvahs. But you can't bury him. You can't bury him. Why? Because there are mitzvahs. That's, that's the counter argument. So, Rabbi Yosef said back to Abaya or Avdimi, didn't we learn the with respect to qualifying this b'raise, the statement of Rabbi Yochanan. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, and he argues with, with uh, uh, Rabbi Mani, this, uh, the son of Rabbi Yanai, and he says, and I'm, it says Rabbi Yosef, I'm going according to that shit, uh, that I feel a little you could even bury him, because Rabbi Yochanan, the Tamei, Rabbi Yochanan goes according to his position, Again, arguing with Rabbi, Rabbi Yanai, Rabbi Mani, the son of Rabbi Yanai. The Omar Rabbi Yechelon, Maidik Siba Mesim Chavshi, Rabbi Yechelon said the Pasek and tell him again. Don't forget, is talking about himself. He's saying that he's been, you know, didn't look up the Pasek there, but he's, uh, he's like lying, like dead in the field, abandoned. But he touches the word Chavshi as in free. But Mesim Chavshi. Given she makes Adam Nasa Chavshi Mina Mitzvah, the person dies, the Pasuk is hinting to, he is free of Mitzvahs. And so we see Rabbi Yochanan holds clearly, as opposed to Rabbi Mani, Rabbi Yochanan holds, and Rabbi Yosef, it seems, it's not clear which opinion he holds by, but did he, did he accept Rabbi Yochanan's position or not? It's not clear. Pakaparim is definitely machleik is here, but Rabbi Yochanan holds that there's no mitzvah is lost love, black and white. To lachayda to it's very strange. How could this be? How could Rabbi Yochanan hold this? Time is Rabbi Yochanan. So the reason Rabbi Yochanan keeps in shemes adam nasa chav shimin a mitzvah, that Rabbi Yochanan says when a person's dead he's free. Mahan isha calls man shumbes ain't all of mishum misikeloyim. What's the quote he brings? The dead are free of mitzvahs, but what, when he gets up. When he gets up, the proof that he brings. 
But we're talking about Tchiyas Hamesim. So this is only helps as long as he's dead. That ain't all of Mishum Issa Kiloi. I've lived my hand in this manch lachet Tchiyah. But the Rabbi Yechonon's proof, his shita. How does it? How does it help? They can bury him in Kiloiim for what's going to happen when he gets up. Shaz Yochel all of Issa Kiloi. Then you'll have. Then will be the prohibition. The given shikain, and therefore. Ain't as man the time is Rabbi Yechonon to be meisim. Rabbi Yechonon brings a proof from what from the pasuk that the dead are free of mitzvahs. There's no raya from there. That shaykh, there's no connection between that. It's not connect, It's not shaykh as man shabe tzarech time is Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef is talking about not during death. Rabbi Yosef is talking about tchias meisim. Rabbi Yosef said that mitzvahs betelis lasted lava. He meant by tchias meisim. Rabbi Yechon is not talking about Tchiyas HaMesim and Sins. He brings a Rai only from. And the, the Rai that he brings is only from Bamesim Chavshi. And how do you get from there that you can bury him and, and that also extends even to Tchiyas HaMesim? Now, this is, if Rabbi Yechon would have just said, you can bury him, it doesn't give an explanation. Good, so then he holds it, what? That there are going to be mitzvahs. But the Rai he brings is from the dead, Bamesim Chavshi. It's not Rai from there. Taka when they're dead, not, but we're not talking death, we're talking Tchiyas HaMesim. When the dead get up, they're alive, not dead. So what, what's the rai that he brings? Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yechon, the Tamei. You follow? The kash is on the rai. He wouldn't bring a rai. Good, he holds. The kash is on Rabbi Yosef. Huh? The kash is on Rabbi Yosef. No, but it's brought, they're the bringing Rabbi Yosef. The, the kash, no, the, no, not Rabbi Yosef. Why Rabbi Yosef? Rabbi Yosef says, mitzvah, from the b'rai, said, mitzvah, betel, is lost in love. He finished. There's no mitzvah. The Brayshe said you can make mech tachrichin. So they, let's just get the flow. So Abai accounted, no, what Dimi, that no, there are mitzvahs because this Brayshe is only saying for the husband, but you can't bury him. To which Rabbi Yosef counted, uh, yeah, Rabbi Yosef counted, no, Rabbi Yochanan said, so, so, but the question is Rabbi Yochanan. Both, you're right. Yeah, no, you're On both, that package. You're correct. Rabbi Yosef counted, Rabbi Yochanan said, no, Bameisim Chavshi. What's the right from Bameisim Chavshi? So the question is so Rabbi Yosef and Rabbi Yochanan, the one that argues is clearly Rabbi Mani in the same way Rabbi Yanai. They say, Leishonu El You cannot, you, you cannot uh, bury him because there will be, will be mitzvahs. But Rabbi Yosef and Rabbi uh, who quotes Rabbi Yechanan, is saying there's no mitzvahs, and what's the lie Rabbi Yechanan brings? That the dead don't have mitzvahs, what's that got to do with our subject? We're talking about when they get up, not when they're dead. Clear? Yeah? Vayit ve'ikeh, he's the ikeh kashe. Mamesh is still in Rabbi Yechanan. Besugye de tchies ha-meisim is Sanhedrin. The Gemarion Sanhedrin talks about tchies ha-meisim, it says as follows. Omar Rabbi Yechanan. Minayin et tchies ha-meisim in ha-toyra, how do we know Tchiyas HaMesim? In other words, Tchiyas HaMesim could mean you get up and there's no mitzvahs. But let's look at the context. The Torah says you should give Truma to who? To Aaron. Would Truma ever given to Aaron? There's no Truma in the, in the Midbar. Aaron is forever. He never went into Israel. And that's when Truma begins. When they... The farm, agriculture. Alamalamit says Rabbi Yechanan. Shah said, Lichio is going to get up in the future. If he saw, no, he said, Truma, he didn't give Truma. Outright contradiction. Shemizer Muchach, we see from here, Shesvira Leil Rabbi Yechanan, Shein Mitzvah Betel is lost. Rabbi Yechanan holds clearly there's going to be mitzvahs. She came mitzvahs Truma, Lachet Chies Amesim, Rabbi Truma. When the dead get up, Vin Kain, Echomar Rabbi Yechanan, I feel the how can Rabbi Yechonon maintain that you can even bury a person in Keloyim? When he gets up, he's going to be wearing Keloyim. You look in order 39, this Kash is asked by the Siddhi Tahara to Mesech the Nida, and the only way he's able to answer is to change the, the Girs. We can't like us to reconcile the Machlekes, the, the Stira. In Rabbi Yechonon's own words. So now we come to the Rebbe's Meridika answer. Yeah, we're clear, we're good. Ois, hey. I don't know what page number you have, it's different than me. 
יש לו אימה. שרבי יוחנן לטמאי, זה כמו דסס, רבי יוסף, קורדינג, אקספיינג רבי יוחנן, או קורדינג הם. Then he goes according to his reasoning that says, "Kibim shemais adam nasa chav shemnan mitzvus." When a person dies, he's free of mitzvus. So, gam be of a hezbah dibur Rabbi Yosef. This is also an explanation to Rabbi Yosef's words, "Shemitzvus betelis lasid lava." Even though Rabbi Yosef is talking, our question was, "Is the matrias a mason?" Rabbi Yosef is talking about death. So, how is this? How so? So, a completely puzzled answer. Hapirish, the explanation of the quote that Rabbi Yosef said, we see from the Brisa, they can bury someone in, in, in Kiloyim. And he said, from here we see, mitzvahs betelis lasid lovey, that mitzvahs are nullified. The diakia is the commandments no longer. No need to command. In brackets, mitzvahs like just dafka the, the mitzvah in terms of the commandment. Shegidram hutzivu lo adam. What's a mitzvah? Mitzvah is a commandment to the person. So what does it mean? Let's revisit the quote. Not that he's free from mitzvahs. It doesn't mean he's free from the observance. That's going to continue. He's free from the need to be commanded. Let's see inside. She kivin she may saw the nachag mara medos became my mitzvahs and a person dies with means he completed the whole avodah. Nasa adam chav she made a mitzvah he's free from mitzvahs. Hi no, we're talking about the ultimate bitter. Hi no she gamba le matchia that even in the world of tchias amesim the perfect world. After completing the whole avayda of refining the world, which is the today, now you have to do. What happens now? There is no commandment you need to put on film. So what's left? The mitzvah exists, no need to tell him. In other words, organically and naturally, we'll observe the mitzvahs being one with Hashem without the need to be commanded. That's what drops. The mitzvah component, the need to command, the need to be told. In a perfect world that is one with Hashem. The, the halacha, the actual observance, the mitzvah as not a commandment, but as the rotten of Hashem, that will endure forever. But the actual mitzvah, the existence of the mitzvah, tefillin, Shabbos, and so on, kiloyim, all the positives and negatives, they will all be kiyim nitzchi, mitzvah, medes, lo'elam, balol me'lomim, they will stand forever, but not as a commandment, but simply the expression of the divine will, who will now explain. Ha'gedet the mitzvah sibri lo'odom, the the definition is we're, we're now separating. Now that we're looking at the word mitzvah and we're explaining it in two, two levels. There is mitzvah commandment and then there is it's mitzvah, the will of God. The, the difference being that the mitzvah, the commandment component, when the person is separate, there's three things. There's God who commands the commander there's the one who is commanded, and there's the commandment. Then, when he's independent from God, we can talk about a commandment of Hashem, who tells him, the commandments instruct him to conduct himself according to Hashem's will. But after he's done all the mitzvahs, the world is perfected. His whole identity. The whole apratim shibay and all of the individual components. He stresses that because the mitzvahs externally address the different details. Six thirteen addresses the six thirteen components of the body. After they've all been refined and elevated, and the chadur beretzayin shalakach baruch lo permeate with God's will, he's fixed. The nas of a mind with the matzav shall tzavta. He himself is now attached. Mitzvah malosh and tzavta. 
Mitzvah means to attach, to connect. And he's joined with God. As the Zoya says, he's thoroughly hidden. They become one with the Kutshebrich al they're all one. Eden are all one with God through Torah. When will that be? It'll be actualized and revealed when Mashiach comes. So then, we don't have to, there's no, the whole notion of commanding is no longer applicable. He's not a separate entity. He's got to be told what to do. We will feel the will of God, as it were, and organically express it. Kim, without being told, Kim Shemitzias, but we'll soon get to what happens to Kaloyim. He's buried in Kaloyim. To what happens, we'll soon see. Kim Shehu Mitzias, and it's certainly Shalak Adish Baruch Hu. He is his whole identity. Is you are the the will of Hashem. That's what you embody. That's what you are. That's what you express. Shebevada Miskayim Bepayil, and therefore they're certainly fulfilled in actuality. Bederach Memela. Naturally, organically, God's will, al yidei ha-mitzvahs da mitzvahs, because of the existence of mitzvahs, God's essential will is forever, and that's therefore going to be manifested naturally and organically when Mashiach comes without the need to command. Wrapping it up. Now we'll reconcile this contradiction. He said you can bury in Kaloyim. Then he said that when Mashiach will come, we're giving Trumma to Aaron. So there is Mitzvah, so there isn't. Now we understand it. He holds that you can bury a person in Kaloyim. And he says, Why given Shem Mitzvah, but tell us, Lassid Lovoy? Af, even though she if he learns that, Chiyas Amesim, from, and the sin is Trumma Laren, the Tayus of the future, you shall give. They never did, so that means he's going to give him when he when he gets up. Lachin she also lichios. So how do you reconcile it when he, when Aaron will get up? So he can bury in Kiloim, and we're going to be giving trumah to Aaron. Key, the reconciliation is hametzias the nesinas trumah tia gam lachin itchias amesim. There won't be a commandment. You have to give trumah. No need to command it. We'll just do it. It will happen naturally. The mitzvah, the existence of that mitzvah, the, in essence, without the need to command, it will be. Not because, as a commandment, he's free from mitzvahs, in brackets, free and because he transcends. As we explained many times, the true freedom of choice is freedom not to choose, but freedom from choosing. And that's really what's happening here. That's what he means. Freedom from choosing. Freedom in the virtuous sense. The person doesn't have to be told. He's not separate from God. One with him. Now, therefore, we can bury him in. In Kilayim. In the Shatnas. When he gets up, they won't be you're not allowed to wear kiloyim. No need for that. It just won't happen. He certainly will not be wearing kiloyim. The moment he gets up. So he doesn't have it doesn't spell it out. But it means the fibers will spring apart. That's all. Just being intolerable. doesn't spell out exactly either the fibers will spring apart or he will remove them himself without the, the command look at our in a moment it won't be a commandment but natural and automatically because of God's will that he doesn't want Shemizbalo, Mizbata, Shemizgalo, Mizbata, they used to the Kiloyim. Because of God's will, that he doesn't want Kiloyim. And that's expressed in this prohibition. So that's naturally going to happen without the need to be commanded. He will feel it organically. So, Lechayda, 
We don't have to say that we have to say the five is spring apart. For he would just simply divest himself immediately. The moment he gets up, if he right away gets up and takes it off, there's no issue. And that will happen not as a commandment, it just feels the will of God. It's an intolerable situation. Now, listen. How do we say, how do we say uh, that a person can ever be a separate Matthias from the Abishter? I know seemingly he seems separate, but in essence, he's never separate. So he's saying that's going to be revealed then consciously in the world, pale mamish, in, embracing his goof, everything. Uh huh. Where in essence, the neshama is in essence one that at its core. That's going to be revealed and embraced consciousness, all the details that he said before, the pratim of his entire being, mind, heart, body, everything in the whole world is seamlessly, organically one with Hashem, expressing His essential, eternal will. It will be impossible to sin. The world won't allow. Look at our order. Does it bring it over here? So what we saw before, the famous message, Mashiach will come, the person will want... This is talking even Yemosa Mashiach, even before. A person will want to, to, to uh, pluck a fig from a tree on Shabbos, the fig will cry out, it's Shabbos today. Similar idea, the whole world. So no, it's just impossible to happen. Not that a person would want, but Tchiesa Mesim certainly not. He wouldn't want and the world wouldn't allow it. The world is organically expressive of Hashem's will. All right, we'll look at the Ha'odas, Bezer Hashem, tomorrow. Yeah, look at our 42, there it is. is similar to the world itself. The world itself becomes one with God because we are, so the world will, through which we do mitzvahs, what's going to be? It says in Medesh, if a person want to pluck a, a fig, will cry out, it's Shabbos today, you can't. So the whole world will be, becomes a home for Hashem and alive as it were, alive in the sense of expressing the living God and His living will, His eternal will. So Lachot again, not to say that the fibers spring apart or maybe that, or just he gets up right away and just, as he gets up, he kicks off the Kaloyim. So the mitzvah, what's, what's the Nukut of the Rebbe's answer? We've reconciled. The halacha is forever. Halacha means, the, will, will, will mitzvahs be performed? Yes. Mitzvahs bottle, the need to command it, that's no longer. That's the essence of the answer. And we'll see some of the beautiful orders out of 46, where the Rebbe expl- revisits now, I in base of the Rebbe Rashab, we had a question, we're going to revisit the question and we'll answer it in light of what we just said. We didn't think that the Rebbe is going to reject on any level something of the Rebbeim. We had a question, didn't seem to answer, but now we'll understand what he means. Okay. That's tomorrow.